get that one going and get this one going and stick it back in my pocket. So we have a bulletin and the bulletin is uh, the same format as you've had uh, for, for weeks now and it begins with a call to worship. And with that, I will say, the Lord be with you. The Word of God is living and active. It's in intentions of the heart. Let us worship God. Our next item on the bulletin is the prayer of the day. And uh, often the prayer of the day is, is uh, relates to the scripture passage I'm going to read or relates to the timing. This time it relates to the passages that I will read. So with that, let us lift up our voices together as we read aloud. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the spirit of your son into our hearts. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom. This and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen indeed. Our opening hymn of praise is the ancient pray, uh, hymn of My Faith Looks Up to Thee. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Cindy? <laughs> is the prayer of confession and I will lead you into that prayer of confession with these words since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely our God is a God of justice waiting to be gracious to you yearning to have pity on you in faith let us make our confession to God hold on don't, don't, don't get ahead of me. I've got papers to turn up here. So here we go. <laughs> You're eager to get into the prayer of confession, I can tell. So, merciful God, in your gracious presence, we confess our sin and the sin of this world. Although Christ is among us as our peace, we are a people divided against ourselves as we cling to the values of a broken world. Profit and pleasures we pursue lay waste to the land and pollute the sea. The fears and jealousies that we harbor set neighbor against neighbor and nation against nation. We abuse your good gifts of imagination and freedom, of intellect and reason, and have turned them into bonds of oppression. Lord, have mercy upon us, heal and forgive us, Set us free to serve you in the world as agents of your reconciling love in Jesus Christ. Let us pause for a moment as we reflect upon those words. The Lord is merciful and gracious. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the Lord's steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another as we pass the peace. We turn to our neighbors and we say, Peace of Christ be with you, and we respond, and also with you. Why don't you give a wave out there? I'm going to... And then I want you to do something for me. I want you to wave to me. Wave over here, because there's people that... Your friends that are watching you. And so somebody told me I moved the camera too fast. 
So there's Cindy over there. So, so there you go. There we're gathered. Here we're gathered. Here we're gathered. I mean, so there here. I go on vacation for one week and I forget where I am. So, uh, but uh, our next item is in the bulletin is our scripture readings and this time I, I, I may, yes, I mentioned I mentioned three passages and and I do believe I'm going to read the psalm passage and it's, I'll be, be able to find it in a moment. But but with that, I simply want to say, let us pray. Let us pray the prayer for illumination. Oh God. Prepare now our minds and hearts that through your word Christ may dwell within us and ever rule over our thoughts and affections as the Lord and Master of our lives. Amen. Amen. Our first reading comes from Genesis, the first book of the Bible, of course, but it's near the end of Genesis and it's near the end of what the theologians would call the, the uh, or Bible scholars would call the Joseph cycle. So it's coming near to the end of that. But Genesis 45, verses 1 through 15, or it's titled by this publisher, Joseph provides for his brothers and family. The scene is is that Joseph is in the, in the court, court uh, in the, in the uh, temple, and or the palace, excuse me, and his brothers are seated or on their knees before him. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But, this bro but his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his, at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry, go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt, come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that, is my, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother's brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. I now read to you Psalm 1, Psalm 133. Doesn't take doesn't take much of a breeze to move my papers. Psalm one thirty three. There we go. The pub, the editor titled this one "Brothers Dwell in Unity." Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil of the, on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. And our final reading this morning is from Matthew 15. I'm going to read to you Matthew 15, verses 10 through 20. 
In this reading, Israel is often referred to as the plant sustained by God. Jesus came along and claimed that the Pharisees would be uprooted because they were not truly God's people. You can imagine how what kind of riot that incited. The religious leaders, he claimed, were blind to spiritual truth because they refused to accept Jesus' teachings. Matthew 15, 10 through 20. And Jesus called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard you this saying? And Jesus answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And Jesus said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles the person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, threat, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I pushed it down so hard it now won't come back up. So, well, the title of my sermon is uh, To Be Uncommon, okay? And the question for the day is, what is in your mouth? What is in your mouth? You could also ask the question, what comes out of your mouth? But it's um, a wise person once said, be sure to taste your words before you spit them out. Be sure to taste your words before you spit them out. Or in other words, think about what you're saying before you say it. And I, in my life, I have wished and wished so many times I had just thought one more second before it came out of my mouth. Because, you know, once it comes out of your mouth, you can't, you can't bring it back. And it's like everybody's going to remember it because it was just wasn't the right thing to say at that moment. I've always wondered, I, how many of you have seen that, the, the movie Men in Black? MIB, Men in Black? Okay, so you, Will, Will Smith and the folks. Remember that little thing, that little gadget that they had in the movie? It's called a, they called it in the movie a neuralizer. Neuralizer, okay? And if they, want, if, if they wanted the person to forget what just happened, remember they'd hold it up and they, and they wore sunglasses so they wouldn't see the flash. But it would emit this bright flash and then it would erase the, um, the short-term memory of the person and they would have no idea of what happened. And, but they would be okay. Well, I can tell you, I have wanted to do that. I have, I've wanted a neuralizer, and I need two of them. I need one for the pulpit, and the other for my office. And, and, but, and the one for the pulpit, it would have to be big, you know, because I want everybody in the room to forget what I just said. Because, uh, you know, as you can tell, my speaking, you know, I've I developed the, 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 um, the, the, the craft of just talking. And so... Uh, sometimes when you're just talking, you're going to regret what you just said. So, but, uh, um, but as I said, the question of what is in your mouth or what's get, get, just getting ready to come out of your mouth reminded me of 
I've, I've, I've had Cocker Spaniels almost my whole life, okay? One of my favorites was years ago when I was living in Wilmington, Delaware. Actually, it was a suburb of Wilmington called Bear, Delaware. But I was living down there, and I, and I bought this little, cute, little uh, female Cocker Spaniel, and her name was Chrissy. And Chrissy, we had this townhouse that had a, a, a fenced-in area in the back, so I could open up the door and let her out, and she'd go out in the backyard and do her business, and she'd wander around and, and look for things, and she'd come back in the house. I'd open up a sliding door, and she'd come running back in, and I'd go, whoa, 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 whoa. what's in your mouth? Uh, just dog people, huh? Yeah, you know what's sick? That's right, Jackie, you know. There's times you, you want to know, but you really don't want to know. So Chrissy had, had, had I trained her to get to the point where if I put my hand out, she would just open her mouth and let it tumble out into my hand. I can remember this happening more than once, is that I would op- I'd go, Chrissy, drop it, and I'd put my hand out like this, and when she opened her mouth, it was a big, fat slug. Oh. I know. It didn't happen just once. It, it, she had some fascination with slugs, and she would just go out and about and looking for them, and then she'd bring them in the house so many times. But So that's that one memory that, that I have. I had another Cocker Spaniel after that, and his name was Buster. It was male, and he had the same habit. He would go out there and put things in his mouth, and he'd come in the house. And you, You've seen that body language of a dog when you know they're carrying something in their mouth, and you really don't want to ask, but you don't want it left in the house. So, but, so, but the thing is, is that you know, it, it, Jesus is teaching about what, what is in your mouth? What, what, you know, what is, what's getting ready to come out of your mouth? Because in their world, they, it, it there, I'm going to teach you, um, there's a translate, this translation, all your translations have a twist in it that, that, and you'll get used to me. I'll go, that's not really what it says. That's not really what it says. So, here we go. In the original text, in the original manuscript, it does say, it has a word, but you know how this says, whatever comes out of your mouth defiles? Well, that was as close as they could get. Because really, what it says is that which comes out of your mouth can make you common, okay? Can make you common. And to the Jewish mind, that was serious stuff. Because they believed they were uncommon. Because uncommon and holy were synonymous. The holy people were uncommon. The Gentiles were common. So what comes out of your mouth makes you those undesirable Gentiles that live on the street, live down that hill from you. And so see what what it's saying is that it's not, think about the Jewish purity laws. It's not what goes into your mouth that makes you common. See? It's what comes out of your mouth that makes you common. Because what it why? Why is that? It's because it reveals, it reveals what may be lurking in your heart and what may be the thoughts on your mind that come out. And so it's a good question, it's a good practice to say, what is in my mouth. What is getting ready to come out, come out of my mouth? You know, it's like like the like those wise sayings that taste the words before you spit them out. It's like think think about what we're saying. In this in the in, in our day today, we have a tendency to talk fast. So therefore if somebody speaks we feel like we need to answer them right away. I I had the opportunity to um, sit in a, a class with the, um, a professor who answered no one fast. No one. He waited. You could ask him a question. And you, you, you truly thought that he didn't hear you. And he'd just sit there and look at you. And then he'd finally answer you. And it wasn't he was being disrespectful. It's just he thought about his every word. Because he knew once it came out of his mouth, he couldn't retract it. And I think it's a wonderful practice of all of us, is that, you know, taste those words before you spit them out. You know, think about what's in your mouth before you let it out. And that, and that works everywhere, but especially for Christians. 
Because for us, that may be the only way they know, uh, the community knows us. And that's something that, you know, as we sit atop this hill, I think about the opportunities that this church could have to have a better, greater presence in the community. And it doesn't mean handing out Bibles on that intersection right there. But by the way, that, that would be incredible. I think we'd go broke handing out Bibles. But, but I mean, there's so many cars that come by. But my point, my point is that that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making ourselves present in various settings and tasting our words before they come out of our, before we spit them out of our mouth. And think about what we're saying, because we're being watched. As God has placed us on this hill, we're being watched. And it's good to be watched. And it's good to be that example, because the community needs us. Not to tell them that they're wrong, they need us, because people right now, there are people right now that feel very, very alone very isolated, very separated. And they headed into the pandemic like that. I mean, it, the pandemic just made it worse. So as we go and as we thrive here and as we try to identify who we are, you'll hear me teach you these lessons of taste your words before you spit them out. It's a good practice, whether you're a Christian, whether you're a businessman or a woman, whether you're a preacher whether you're a teacher, whether you're in the medical field, whether you're in the banking, whatever it may be, taste your words before you spit them out. Why? Because the world is watching us. Let us pray. Lord, as we consider your teachings, I can only imagine what those disciples and those crowds must have been like. And the things that you heard them say, and as even you chastise your disciples, is it, do you still not understand? You've been teaching them and teaching them for months and months, and they still needed another lesson. They needed another explanation. Lord, sometimes we do too. Forgive us for our misunderstandings. Forgive us for the words that came out that we wish we could get back. And Lord, also encourage us to pace ourselves and to taste those words our words before we spit them out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I, here we go. Here we go. I will introduce this song simply by saying that I think this is one of the earliest songs I can remember in my, in my life. I can remember mom sitting beside me at Royster Memorial Presbyterian Church in Norfolk, Virginia. And I can still remember everybody singing, Blessed be the tie that binds. Apostles' Creed, and I simply lead into it with these words, Christians, what do we believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he descended into heaven and sit it on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy, Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen indeed. At this time, I give opportunity for those to lift up their cares and concerns, their joys and thanksgivings. So with that, if you raise your hand, I'll call upon you and you can you can uh, share with us what may be on your heart and mind. Yes, Shirley. Hi, uh, this past week I talked to Dolores Roscoe. She is doing much better. In fact, she was hoping to be here today. Let's see if she's not. Also, I found out about Reverend Rycheck. Um, he's still with us. Uh, he's lost an awful lot of weight. That's hard to imagine because the last time we saw him, he really was nothing but skin and bones at that time. Also, Mrs. Roger had a uh, hip replacement, so uh, she closes in the prayer and the Lord's too. And thanks for the calls that I've gotten about different people and the information that's been sent to us. Okay. What was the last name you mentioned, Shirley? Roger. After right after Reverend Wright. Um, oh, Dolores Roscoe? Yeah. Okay, so Dolores Roscoe, Reverend Wright. And Mrs. Wright. And oh there we go. And Mrs. Wright. Yeah. Thank you, Shirley. Others? Okay. Well oh yes. How about that? Let's go back to school. Yeah, I'm right. The kids going back to school, the teachers that are going back to school, the administrators that are already there, yes. And the parents that don't know what to do. And the parents that don't know what to do. Some of them are homeschooling, some of them are doing virtual, some of them are are um, caught up in these uh, hybrid schedules where you know one child goes one day and then the other child goes the next day. So prayers go all around for all of them, whether it's Dolores Roscoe, Reverend Rychek, or our publics or our school system. So with that, let us pray. As you said, Lord, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person or makes a person common, but what comes out of the mouth, this makes us common. Lord, you have empowered us to be holy. You have empowered us to be uncommon. And you taught us that it is what comes out of the mouth that indicates the contents of our hearts. And sometimes, Lord, we do not always say things that are pleasing to you. We do not always say things that are glorifying to you. Lord, in our, as we stumble along, as we try to find the words, though we don't know the contents of, of any heart, you do. And you know the contents of our hearts, my heart, all the hearts. And you still work with us. You still, still get things done through us. Lord, Change our hearts that we may indeed say that which is pleasing to you. And now I pause for a moment of silence as those gathered here have the opportunity to lift up their own prayers to you. confidence of the children of God. Let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, indeed. At this time, I would, I would uh, you know, pass the plate, but I notice as I walk by, the basket is, has been filled, and you've dropped your offerings there, and perhaps you have others to drop. And I simply, simply want to uh, mention this as, I, as we might 
in the sanctuary one day is that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth on the first day of the week, which is today, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper. In other words, as you are able. Let's pray. Lord, the, the offering, the gifts have been gathered, and whether they were by labor or by finances, Lord, we hand them over to you. We return to you what is yours, which you have graciously given to us for a time. Lord, take these gifts, and may we indeed expand our presence in the community. May we indeed help you grow your kingdom in the world. And may we indeed taste our words before we spit them out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, I'm going to do, just because this is recorded and a lot of people hear it, I'm going to, because of my paper blowing away, I missed that first prayer and all the words. And some people, that's all they get is my voice. And so, if you don't mind, I'm going to read this prayer one more time before we, we leave. But you can pray along with me. You don't have to read it with me. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, my friends. So, this week, on Tuesday evening, is a session meeting, and as I, 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 what I would like to do is, and I'm going to try to do this more often to remind you, pray for us. Pray for the session. Because the session is now, you know, there are decisions they're making that they, that when they signed up to be on session, they did not. They, did, they weren't ready for that. And so, but they are a wonderful group of people. And I simply, not praying for them as if they don't know what they're doing, but pray for them that the Spirit works through them to do what we need to do. Uh, one thing I'm going to bring before the session the session is not approved yet, but one thing I want you to look forward to, because I do believe the session will support it, is on the Sunday of Labor Day weekend, what I hope to do, and I'll present it to the session, is have a picnic after the worship service. And you bring your food, and we have a, we have a short time to just gather and have be a community again and remind us all of what it feels like to be here together. Because, as you can tell, because I'm recording, I just whip right through this service. And uh, I'll go into my office and look back and go, that was 35 minutes. <laughs> and so, what's going to be hard is when we're all back in the sanctuary, you're going to go, Pastor Steve, slow down. So, so, slow down. So, but, uh, like, the thing is, is that I just think it would be a, I, I just think it'd be a great feeling for us to, to remind that we are a community. We are a loving community. We do taste our words before we spit them out. But... So think about it, and next Sunday, hopefully I come back with the plan, but uh, like I said, I'm going to present it to the session. If you have any idea as to how we can have such a picnic out here and stay within the, the guidelines of the CDC and the guidelines of uh, Allegheny County, I'd love to hear them. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. But with that, as I say so often, Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's children said, Amen. Now, let us, now we're going to close. Oh, oh, I, this is one of those songs. Hold on, Cindy, hold on. I got, I, I got to like gather my, look, yeah, that's right. I got <laughs> She put her hands up like, uh, my hands aren't on the keyboard. So, but uh, th this is one of those songs, this is one of those feel-good Christian hymns that even though the words are kind of dark, for some reason, I just said, I'm just going to let those words be what they are and have Cindy play for us, Rock of Ages. Go in peace, my friends. <laughs>